Over the second and third decades of the 20th century, uh, Gershwin connected to his publishing world with producers, people who were putting shows together. He wrote a one-act opera for the Ziegfeld Follies. Uh, you know, Ziegfeld did these marvelous extravaganzas involving the beautiful showgirls and spectacular sets. And he wrote this opera called Blue Monday. And um, he also, uh, with his brother Ira, who was a brilliant, or as some people say, his lovely wife, Ira, and, uh, <laughs> was a brilliant lyricist who wrote with such a light touch, with wonderful humor. Uh, they managed to write several shows, most of which are forgotten, but the songs are not forgotten. Um, and the leading orchestra leader at the time, Paul Whiteman, was intrigued with Gershwin's little one-act opera that he'd written. And he approached him. He said, I'm, I'm putting on a concert next year. I want to show that jazz can be taken seriously, it can, can be presented in a concert setting, that there's something here that is of real musical worth. And I wonder if you would write a piece write a piece, kind of a mini concerto for piano and orchestra that would be in your, your marvelous, jazzy language, musical language, and suitable for concert performance. And George said, I'm honored. This is a very exciting. Yes, I'd be thrilled, very pleased to write this piece for you. Uh, so uh, Rackman gave him the date, which was February 12th, Lincoln's birthday. Then sometime in the preceding fall, 1911, I mean 1923, uh, Richard promptly forgot all about it. <laughs> I don't know how we could forget all about it, but apparently he did. Or if he remembered, it was somewhere off in the future. And one evening he was playing pool with a friend, and his brother Ira was along, and Ira was reading Variety. <laughs> hey, George, it says right here that Whiteman's putting on a concert at Aeolian Hall in, on February 12th, Lincoln's birthday, in which she will introduce a new piano concerto by the young American composer George Gershwin. <laughs> Just heard Rhapsody in Blue, and he knew it was a masterpiece. <laughs> 
Uh, no question about it. And, and the audience that came to the concert was star-studded in, in, in the classical world. It included Sergei Rachmaninoff, it included uh, Yasha Heifetz and Fritz Freisler and uh, uh, Anton Rubinstein, I'm not Anton Rubinstein, uh, Joseph Hoffman, and many of the great, great musicians in the classical world, the same number of the, the great jazz musicians who came. And the critics went crazy for it, and immediately the conductor of the New York Symphony at that time, Walter Damrosch, who was present, approached Gershwin and said, I want you to write a piano concerto for the 1925 season. Uh, and Gershwin was delighted and went to the library and looked up piano concertos. <laughs> <laughs> form of a piano concerto was, <laughs> but he got to work, and by gosh, the piano concerto he wrote was extremely successful.